probably run out of battery halfway through anyway. <laughs> okay, welcome everyone. How are you all? Good. Stay healthy. Good. Um, okay, let's come to sit. So we'll come to sit. In fact, you can take any comfortable seated posture. So maybe Sukhasana, compact cross-legged position, knees, well, ankles, space in um, place between your pubis and legs. Or you might come onto a block and take um, Siddhasana, which is a wider cross-legged position, looking towards aligning the heels with the midline. And we'll draw the buttock flesh out and back just to help the tilt of the pelvis. And then we're going to place our hands at a rest point, so on the thighs, palms down. And close your eyes. So close your eyes. Settle your breath. So settling your breath will normally involve, obviously if you're not congested, moving to breathing through the nose. And not trying too hard with the breath. In fact, not trying at all. Trusting that the breath knows how to breathe itself. Now, that may be that you have the occasional spontaneous deeper breath, or you know a deep sigh may come in. But you can allow the breath to find its own steady. softening through the outer body as we sit here. And as we allow a rise up through the midline of the body, we can let the shoulders release. We can let our facial muscles relax. We can allow that continued flowing of the breath. And for at least duration of this class. Let's keep that as our focus. Let's keep the movement towards release, the movement towards settling, the movement towards steadiness as part of our So whether or not we are drawn to yoga, and obviously we all are still here in a yoga class, but you know, all humans are on some level, you know, looking to find their own essence. You know, we feel satisfied when we are steady and relaxed, we're not being pulled in different directions or being pulled into uncertainty or, you know, at the moment being pulled into fear. We find a settled state. You know, when everything is steady. Now that's not reliant upon external conditions, it's mostly reliant on us coming into a connection with our own centre. So to take a moment of stillness is really useful for this. It can pull us into our centre or we can direct our attention into our centre. Bring our hands to our heart and we're going to chant Om three times together. And as we chant these Om's, we're going to feel them coming from deep within our center. And we're going to feel that we send those Om's out into the world 
as a unified force. So, you know, this interesting time that we have at the moment where, you know, people are perhaps being called into separation from other people. You know, it's useful to come back to those things which connect us. So, OM as an underlying sound, a vibration that represents you know, unified awareness or unified consciousness can be a useful tool to feed into that sense of integration. So as we chant these three ohms, we send them out into the world, we hear our ohms together and we receive each other's ohms and we feel them as complete connection. So let's take a deep inhalation to Feels like we should be standing on this beautiful summer day, so let's go with that. So come to stand in the centre of your mat, and we can take a tadasana with the feet hip width apart. So this tends to be so we have two versions of tadasana that we normally go for: the feet together and feet apart. Feet together is really useful in that it draws us into a sort of um, more concentrated midline of the body, so energetically it's very useful. But um, feet apart tends to make us feel more stable. And this might be something that we feel perhaps, you know, is useful at the moment to feel a sense of stability. So let's spread the toes, let's extend the feet, broaden across the balls of the feet and you know, maybe move around on the feet to find a place where you can sort of land in your centre. So I often find, you know, there's, there's sort of, you know, there's a whole spectrum of approaches to yoga but, you know, it often broadly for me to move into the state of integration moves into two different experiences that I either have to come into a position where I'm, you know, almost absolutely still, obviously, you know, there's always movement of breathing, but where there is a sense of bringing the body into total stillness, or where I might need a little bit of movement. So, and often it's a combination of those two things. So what movement does for me is it will sort of take care of dissipated energies in the body. It will take care of distractions because it, it feeds um, the body something to place its attention, feeds the mind. So, you know, if I feel a little less settled, or I can't quite find my centre, often a little movement, and even as small as what I'm doing here now, which is pretty much a, a gentle swaying, can be enough to take care of that being pulled in different directions. 
until I feel I can drop into a state of stillness. Now the purpose of stillness, you know, is you know in part that we find this settling the, of the mind. That you know we feel more relaxed. But it's what happens in this state of stillness is we are almost switching on the light in the body. So we become more attentive. Our senses become heightened. And this is you know, useful for our practice because what we want to do is feel everything that is part of now. Now, the senses are, you know, within, you know, within the yoga tradition, we are often looking to, in some ways, transcend the senses. But it's not that we are pushing them to one side. What the senses are, are our relationship between, you know, that deeper level of being and the outer world. This is experienced through the senses. So they are the kind of joining point of, you know, that personal locus that we find that we identify with being self, where we, you know, we can drop in and feel that sense of being. And, you know, everything that we see as being external to that. So they are the, the junction point between the external and the internal. Or a filter between the external and the internal. So the senses are super important. We want to, you know, be have a rich experience through the senses. But we recognize that you know the senses are not it. They are not what makes the self. They are not what makes us. They are the filter between the deeper layer of us and everything else. So rich awareness without identity. going to move the, the left arm. So we're going to take it around in a wide circle. We're going to bring the arm forwards and we're going to lift up and allow yourself to deepen into the feet to encourage that lift up. And we're going to take the arm back. Now I'm happy for you to turn into this to allow the arm to come directly behind you. So there's no pressure being placed on the shoulder. And then you bring, you continue that movement. So the arm is going to come forwards and up. You're going to lift and reach. There's a point at which your arm no longer wants to move unless you force it or you give to the movement. And we give to the movement by moving our body into the movement. So we let the body move with this rotation of the arm. Now, as you rotate, you can feel that you are lifting and extending out of the arm and then feeding that movement. But we feed that movement not just from the shoulder joint. We feed that movement from the hip, even from the foot, from below the foot, from the earth beneath us. We can feel this rising up, the lift, the extension, and turn. Now your breath has probably started to 
the link with this movement. At, you know, whatever pace you're taking your movement, I, you know, I haven't given you any instruction on that because I want you to just feel into it naturally. It might be that you get to points where you want to have a little pause and feel into that point and then you continue. But your breath has probably found its own natural flow. And if it hasn't quite found its own natural flow, if you're turning your attention now and the breath doesn't feel like it is in a steady flow or rhythm with this, what you need to do is just bring, stay with the breath, bring your attention to your breath. You know, I could give you direction on when to inhale or when to exhale, but, you know, I think it's, a little bit of a near enemy of what we do in yoga sometimes. The over control of breath is not always useful. There are times for when we want to insert a more directive um, technique with the breath, but most of the time we want the breath to respond to the body naturally. when we return that arm back to the center, we're going to just release, settle, enjoy the space there. And then we're going to move the other arm. So continuing at your own pace. Again, if you need to move the body, if you need to resettle and go ahead this time so it is your right arm which is your mirroring in keep lifting up and then again feel free to turn into it so we're still getting this opening of the armpit we're still getting some movement into the shoulder we can feel the movement of the shoulder blade responding to this rotation of the arm but we're doing it without force. Because this is a yoga practice, we're constantly looking for integration. So the integration here is between the movement, our breath, our experience of the movement through the senses. And we flow. sensory experience here is not just the feeling but you know we can hear the seagulls other noises within the room I'm quite enjoying jangling of Jackie's bracelets just adding to my experience that movement through space. Okay, when you have completed your current round, 
Just come back to pause in Tadasana and again, stay with the sensory experience. And then when we really tap into that, you know, Tadasana becomes enough for us. It's rich, it's engaging. general stride, it's a, the, the stride, the distance of that stride is enough so it feels like it's wide but not so wide that you feel a little bit out of control with that so you know, it should feel like a nice general stride across your mat. We're going to turn our left toes in and turn the heel out so there's a little turning of the toes and an extension out of the heel and then we can turn our right foot and leg out our alignment starting with the front heel lining up with the back instep, okay? And then we can just play into that. So let's just bend the front knee a little and extend the leg. So while we're doing this, we might be adjusting the feet. So you might be even picking up the feet and replacing them until you sort of feel again that sense of being settled here. The body is facing forwards towards the front of the room. Okay. And then from here, once we've got that position where, you know, there is comfort within the joints of the body, ankles, knees and hips, then we're going to move into this. So we're going to bend the front knee and we're going to reach our thigh bone forward. So I want you to feel into this. Let's slow this down for a minute and see if we can feel this reaching out from the inner groin, almost as though we are gathering that extension steadily along the thigh as we bring ourselves down and it might be that you need to lift up again to really feel into that because again we want to drop ourselves down to sit in the hips but we want to do it where we can sit in the hips sit in the hips so we're opening out the front groin now that's it. Perfect. So, you know, play with that. The opening out of the front groin. Just space. Extending into your back heel in the direction of movement from toes to heel. Okay, so you'll notice that that will, if you place your hands on your hips, even though we're turning our body forwards, that, you know, we're at a slight angle for this posture. Okay. Now we'll keep reaching through that front thigh and we're going to bring ourselves up and over. Now I want us to feel this lift up. And you can use your hands if it's useful to slide up through the rib cage and we're going to bring ourselves over. We're just going to bring our forearm onto the thigh and we're going to take the top arm over into a Pajna Konasana. So we can again play with this. We might draw the arm back and then re-extend into it a couple of times. So we can start to reach into it because although we're practicing you know, yoga here in a form where we are holding postures, we don't want them to be statically held. We want to just feel into them so we can draw in and out as we need to. We want to feel an aliveness in the postures. Okay, a little light turn in the belly, a lift through the chest. Feeling up through the outer side of the left side of the body but also feeling up through the inside of the left side of the body, coming up through the inner thigh, extending that up through the midline of the body. 
breathing. Okay, we're not going to come up, but we are going to transfer our hand to the palm on the side, and then we're going to lift up the back heel and we're going to extend forward. So the back heel lifts, we're reaching the arm, we're still in this diagonal position. That's it, breathing. And then keep reaching, keep reaching, keep reaching and bring the hand down to the floor. Bring your other hand down to the floor. And then when we get there, again, we might move. So a little mm -hmm. lean forward, you can roll on the back toes. Mm -hmm. You can push back and you can play into it. Now, what I like to do here is to press into my hand so I get that lift into the back of the ribs. There's a rounding in my back as I come up, so I can feel into that stretch. So it's useful in terms of the breath, in that our breath, or I should say our lungs, you know, they reach right into the back of the body. When we're taking deeper breaths or focusing on our breath, we often focus on the chest area, maybe the belly, we're very focused on the front of the body, but I want you to feel the breath into the back of your body. And actually, there's actually more lung capacity in the back of the lungs because of the positioning of the heart at the front of the lungs. So, feel into the breath there. Okay, we're going to step that front foot back. And we're going to extend it out now in downward facing dog. And again, it might be that you play into some movement here. Now that movement, you know, it's become a fairly common thing to do, I think, these days, to move around in downward facing dog. And that, you know, I love that. I love that this is often offered. So we don't feel that we're getting stuck, but we also don't want to start moving around because that becomes the way we do downward facing dog. It's no better than, you know, being in a statically held position for the sake of it. Moving for the sake of it doesn't really give us the purpose of yoga. But moving to feel into the posture, to, you know, tune into the sensory experience of the posture, you know, that has a purpose. Okay, we'll bring ourselves down, we'll sit back on our heels, taking support if you need to support with a block between your buttocks and heels, blanket underneath the ankles if you need it, and rest your hands either palms down or one hand on top of the other in your lap. And just feel into, again, a natural flow, wait for it to come. And the quality of waiting is not about you know, what often when we're waiting, we're waiting for a future point. You know, like we're waiting for a bus. You know, we know that something's happening in the future that we are expecting to happen. But the waiting here is more of a just sitting in patience. We're not waiting for anything specific. But we're just sitting in patience, just sitting in now. Finding that continuous thread of your breath. Breath, like the senses, is an element of being that is moving between the internal and external. And this is why 
breath awareness can be, you know, so profound in a yoga practice because there is a, a merging between the internal and external experience through the breath. It is imminent in our experience, yet it is also transcendent within our experience. Okay, I'd like you to bring yourselves forward onto your hands and knees now. And you're going to step your foot that is furthest from me forwards. You're going to step it in place of its own hand there. And then you're going to tuck your back toes under. And again, you might play into a little movement here. So I always find these lunge type positions. And if you need a blanket underneath your knee, you can pop that there. But I always find these position sort of it's a bit irresistible to me to start to move here because I like to get into that stretch of the core. So feel into that as you know it's useful. Okay we're going to wrap our arms underneath the front leg. You're giving your thigh a little hug here. And then we're going to lift up our back leg. We can tuck our head forwards. And then again, just let the back of the body relax. So you can really feel this opening out through the back of the ribs. As you do. Now, little bits of movement may help you to stay here. It's stronger than, you know, maybe you might think. So, you know, feel free to reach into it, to play around. Okay, then we're going to release our arms and we're going to bring our arms up in a wide circle as we press into our foot, as we push into the leg to extend the leg and come all the way up. Turn back to the center. Release your arms down. And take a breath. <laughs> to bring your legs back together for a moment or two, feel free. If you're happy here, stay here. Maybe we might feel into a little movement of the hips whilst we're here, which is always useful to re-establish that, you know, that recognition of the mobility we have there. Okay, and then when you're ready, we're going to turn the back toes in, back heel out. Front foot and leg out, front heel lines up with the back instep. Extending the toes forwards. And take deep breaths. Now again, we're going to feel into this extension through the front leg. We're going to keep lifted up through the midline of the body and we're going to feel this extension through the inner thigh. And it might be that you start the extension and then you feel the need to come up. You can lift the toes if that's useful. And then you can keep feeding into that extension. So there's a point at which we can feed ourselves down whether or not we're going in one smooth movement or whether we're coming back. We'll obviously be aware of knees if there's any knee issues. But when we feed ourselves down, we want to feel that we are teasing open this area into the inner groin of both legs. And then we can get to a point where, ah, we can sort of drop in, we can let the hips settle down. Okay, now we're gonna feel again, we're gonna extend over, but we want to feel this rising up and you can even use your hands if that's useful to rise up out of the hips, out of the waist, 
through the rib cage, land your arm on your leg, and then again we're going to take that top arm up and over. And it might be that we play with this movement here. It might be a back and forth movement. It may be a bending the elbow and then a reaching. So as I think we were exploring several weeks ago, the idea of not stretching the body from one point to another, which is what can happen in Pajnokonasa, that we get this instruction to stretch from the toes to the fingers, but feeling an extension out from the center. So it's just a constantly pouring extension from the outer hip down towards the foot, up towards the fingertips. And we're breathing into that. Okay, we're going to do a slightly lift up so we can transfer our hand to the palm. We're going to lift and turn, lifting your back heel, reaching into the hand, reaching into the back heel, extending on the diagonal line, breathing. And then keep reaching yourself down and then bringing your hand down to the floor there both hands and then again we find ourselves in this lunge type position where we may move a little and you can reach into the back of the body, you can wiggle into the hips, you can do whatever you need to do to access integration, to access absorption, to access your breath, to bring all of the senses online so you know, they're always online, of course, but we're not always aware of what we're actually feeling and experiencing through the senses. So, allow, you know, that filter to be, you know, fairly wide and broad. Let everything in. Okay. Hands shoulder width apart, we'll set ourselves back into Adonukha Shwanasana. So reach back, breathe. A lift of the heels can help you to get that turn of the pelvis, and then you may play into the movement. We're not trying to jam the heels down to the floor because it generally steals space from the lower back. But all we're doing is, you know, we are simply making a shape with our body to feel into the experience of being. So in our downward facing dog here, you know, the purpose is not about making it look, you know, a very specific way. You know, there are, you know, we can be led to believe that we want this perfect sort of triangle shape with heels down and really long in the body but it doesn't really matter if you're making that shape and you know you're not integrated with that shape but maybe you're making a shape that you know your knees might be bent you might feel tight in the shoulders but you may be letting everything in you may be completely open to the full experience of the pose and that's what's important Okay, let's fold ourselves down again, knees to the floor. Sit back on your heels and again you can rest your hands in your lap. My palms down or one hand on top of the other in Bhairavi or Bhairava Mudra. we'll just find our back to take a moment to rest. And I 
you rest, just feel the space that is present within your mouth. And the back of your throat. As you feel into that space and you allow your awareness to fully sit within that space, and what generally happens is a sense of that space being broad and wide, of not being limited to being contained within a boundary because what we're identifying with is the space, not the boundary. And that's what you know, we can apply to our yoga when we're feeling into the body and we're feeling into the sensations, we're feeling into space, we're feeling into breath, whatever tool we're using at any particular time. You know, we're not feeling into what contains that. We may be feeling into the epicenter of an experience, but that experience can expand out as wide as we are able to allow it. Okay, we're going to come back to our hands and knees. So come forwards again, come back onto your hands and knees, and then you're going to step your foot again, it's furthest from me, you're going to step that foot forwards, you step the other foot forward slowly, because I think you did the other side last time, then you'll get to do the opposite side, okay, and we're going to hug under that thigh, so Give your thigh a hug. And then tuck your back toes under. And when you're ready, lift the back knee. And find your way into it. So there may be a bit of wobbling, and that's fine. And there might be a bit of movement. And I want you to feel your breath into the back of the body, into the back of the ribs. to release our arms now and take them out in a wide circle, press into your front foot, send the leg to come up, reach up, turn back in, <laughs> wobbly turns, and then release your arms, hands on your hips, we can step back in, and this time we're going to bring our Tadasa into the midline, so we're going to bring the feet closer in together. They don't have to touch all along the midline. We're checking with ankle knees and hips. So for most people, even space between the heels is what is beneficial. But you know, for some people, you might need to have your feet slightly apart. So come into a position where the body is peaceful. And then we'll rest our arms by our side and will come into, you know, not just an experience of rising up, but I want it to be an experience where you're tuning into, you know, as deep as you can go in the body, the very centre of your body. And I want you to feel that you can reach out into the body in all directions from that centre point. So like a little beacon or a little light that can move in all directions and expand out. And again, that expansion out 
doesn't become restricted by you know, the perceived boundary of the body, but we feel that we can you know, energetically reach out through the body, you know, push through the skin, push out into the world. going to bring the body into a little twisting action which we've done before so we're going to be bending the top elbow you're going to be lifting up your right leg so shift your weight into your left foot bend your right knee and then when you're ready bend the knee across the body so moving laterally across the body bring the elbow laterally across the body and just reach in breathe Now it's not about bringing knee and elbow together because we could do that but then we'd start closing into it. It can be nice as well, it's a different experience. In fact it might even be nice, you might want to play with moving into closing and lifting up. But you know, wherever we're moving to, it's never fed from grasping to get to a particular place. Our movement in any posture is more of an exploration. Okay, now we're coming out by extending the leg. We're gonna keep this foot lifted and we're gonna go sideways out. That's it, breathe. Light tone in the belly. It's fun, huh? <laughs> Tom's got a sneaky uh, pole there that he's bringing his hands to. Okay, and then let's draw back into the centre, place the foot down, release the arm down, breathe. Mm. Maybe those spontaneous extended breaths might come in for a while. Mm. And then when you're ready, Raise your other arm up, so your right arm up. Staying deep into the right foot. And then when you're ready, we're going to bend the knee, we're going to bend the elbow, we're going to bring ourselves into this twist. And again, you know, I'm happy for you to move the elbow and the knee in towards each other as an exploration, but it's not the purpose here. You know, twists will always be more effective when they come from space and length in the spine. But, you know, movement does provide us with an opportunity to perhaps awaken parts of the posture that aren't, you know, fully waking to it in stillness. So, you know, feel free to play into it. Okay, and then we're going to reach out and we're going to go diagonally. That's it. While you're still allowed to extend your body out a couple of meters, you might not be allowed to do this soon. We'll just have to do Tadasana for our practice. Okay, bring yourselves back in. Place your foot to the floor. Find your breath, come back here. So, you know, the wonderful thing about, you know, moving the body and maybe doing something more energetic, when we come back, it's like a little return to home. We return back into our center, we regather ourselves. You know, we play with the edges of reaching into the widest parts of our being to return back into the heart center. And these points in between, these 
Vishranti is these rest points in between. And are, you know, they're super important because, you know, they are the space between action. And when we move into action, which of course is beneficial in many ways, but it often requires us, we go into the idea that we are being the actor of that action. So points of non-doing are really useful because it takes us out of having to be someone doing something. This is described as karma-mala in yoga. It's the sort of impurity of thinking we always have to be the doer. So take a moment to be the non-doer. To be the experiencer. Let's bring ourselves to face in towards the center of our mat. this way. Um, oh, so the center of the room, I should say, rather than the center of your mat. That's it. So coming towards the top end. Okay, we're going to come into a little movement which is going to be a little movement between the flexion and extension of the body. So the flexion is going to be to bend forwards, to round in, even coming down really low, almost to a squat. We're going to keep our heels to the floor. And then the extension will be to rise up out of that and then lift up. So you can lift your head and extend up. If it's not comfortable in the neck, it's fine to keep the head forwards, of course. So let's move between those two actions now. So there's a rounding forwards, a little tone in the belly to bring you down, to support you. And when you're there, you might find a little movement is useful. So I quite like sort of moving my shoulders back and forth to reach into the stretch across the trapezius muscle of the upper back. And then pressing into the feet, coming up, rising up, extending out. Again, little tone in the belly as you lift through the belly to the chest. And awareness within the pelvic floor at that lift point. And then coming down maybe with a little wiggle of the hips from side to side as you come down into it. Even a wiggle on the way up might be useful. Arms out, you may take your arms above your head. You know, feel free to explore it in your own way. There may be a bit of side to side movement. So, you know, I've given you the basics, but really happy for you to play around with this, play around with feeling into the movement, feeling into your breath. Okay, and then when you next come down, we're going to pause there because we're going to allow ourselves to come all the way down from here. So you can come down and then we're going to come down, allowing the heels to lift as you need to, to squat down. Taking that little hug, if you need to pop a block under your heels, you're welcome to. Hugging your thighs again, or hugging your shins, tucking in, breathing. Okay, and then from here, releasing your hands, placing your hands to the floor behind you to steady yourself as you roll yourselves all the way down. Taking 
hold of the knees with each hand independently, so fingers pointing down towards the feet, cupping over the knees and extending your arms. So you've got a bit of space here. And that creates, you know, it's not just the space here that we're looking for, it's the space in the back. So after that sort of curling forwards, what we need is a little um, softening through the lower back muscles. So this will place us in a position where that can happen. Okay. And then we're gonna play with a bit of movement here. So you're going to draw one knee in as you extend the other knee away. So we're gonna go through this action of feeling the extension, the pulling away from the knee, which will pull the arm and lift the shoulder as you move back and forth through the legs. And just feeling into that connection of the movement between the arms and the legs. So you can really let that knee shift forwards. your hands from your knees, take your arms out wide, just give the feet a little shake for a moment so you can just release around the ankles and then bring your feet to the floor but we'll do this slowly, we're descending the feet down so the toes steadily touch the floor, they just lightly touch the floor, like a little kiss to the floor. Then the balls of the feet kiss the floor. Then the heels kiss the floor. And then we let our weight drop down. We feel that little roll back of the pelvis, the release through the belly and the lower back. And we rest into that. And we breathe. back up towards your chest and raise your legs above you. So your feet are up towards the ceiling. We're bringing our legs towards this um, 90 degree angle and into extension. But extension doesn't mean dead straight. Extension means you are reaching through the legs. So for some people, the knees will be bent, but you'll feel that you are extending. Okay, now we're going to allow the right leg to move out to the side. Now there's a point at which it stops whilst we keep our pelvis on the floor. So we can just pause there to feel into that. But then we're going to let that leg pull us in, lift the pelvis, and come all the way down to the floor. So we're gonna let the pelvis follow the leg. It has to because of the interconnectivity between the legs and the pelvis. So we bring the leg down like the two hands of a clock here. And then we're going to follow over with the other leg. So the other leg is going to follow. We're gonna feel the roll onto the outer hip. And then we place that leg on top of the other. Now, if you feel really lifted on this back shoulder and it's not comfortable, I am happy for you to bring your arm above your head and you can roll yourself a little sideways into it. And then you can play between rolling back and maybe rolling forward. So we can let the body move back and forth into it if we need to. 
the body may turn towards the right a little more and then you may be able to lift and extend and open it out to the left a little more so you know again you can feel into it you can play into it you know the purpose the goal is always integration it's always moving towards you know connection you know stretching and sort of becoming strong and flexible are you know there's side effects of yoga and you know i know that they have become a purpose for many people and you know it's no um judgment on anyone who chooses to do yoga for that purpose but you know even if that's your purpose you will get more from it if your primary purpose is integration you'll still get the stretch you'll still gain the strength but you'll also gain harmony within your being okay now let's raise that left leg up again and then just feel into the return of the pelvis so we'll have to start rising the right leg up to return the pelvis to the floor we come back into the center you may need to release your legs down and realign yourself so if you need to do that you place your feet to the floor lift up the pelvis realign it and then when you're ready raising your legs back up and we're going to extend the other leg out so it's the left leg this time so first of all allow it to extend wherever it naturally comes to so this will be based on the natural setting of your left hip and then you can allow the leg to continue to the floor and allow the right side of the hip to lift up. That's it, breathe. And then allowing the right side of your hip to lift up, you can then follow with the leg over. So the leg is going to come all the way over now. As that leg comes over, you know, if, it, if you lift a lot on that back arm, you know, feel free to roll forwards, to face towards the left and then play into reaching out towards the right. You can take your arm above your head in a wide circle. You can, you know, move back and forth as you wish and breathe. Center. So you're going to start by rising that right leg up and then you'll get to that point where to bring the leg all the way up. The left leg has to start to lift so you can roll the pelvis back to the floor. And then you may bend your knees and slowly release the legs down to release the feet. And again, you can touch the floor with your toes. You can touch the floor with the balls of your feet. You can touch the floor with your heels and then let your weight drop in. And then there's a ripple effect that moves up through the body to sort of set the body into relaxation. Mm. And then, you know, let your breath flow. It might be that you naturally want to have an extended breath here and really reach that breath into the body and let that extended exhalation drop you into a more settled state. So you may if you wish to bring your knees into your chest take a little hug of your knees perhaps you want to move a little from side to side to play into it you can either interlace the fingers in front of the shins you can either hold the knees or hold 
hold behind the thighs and just move around there and that's it, just breathe. Feel the squeezing out if you are moving of the air between the floor and your body. ready and there's no rush you can continue moving you can continue exploring a little with that movement on your back we're going to move into shavasana from here so you may want to take some head support which you should definitely take if your head leans back when you lie down like that you want some support under the head so lie down feet around about hip width apart. Don't go too wide. So sometimes people will lie down and take their feet really wide because that's where it's expanding out. But actually what it can do is close this lower back area. So about hip width apart, arms a little away from the body. And if you don't feel so comfortable having your arms extended out and off your mat, you can bring your hands in onto your belly, onto your chest, one hand onto the belly, one hand onto the chest still gives us a little open space in the armpits, which allows the shoulders to release. extra blankets or anything let me know I'll bring them to you Closing your eyes now. Yeah. So you see when we close our eyes, we are kind of closing down one of those filters of the senses. to what is on the outside of the body. But we still have vision. We can see what's behind the eyelids. And you know, I'm not talking about you know, what we see in our mind's eye through our imagination, but I want you to just focus on what you actually see. So maybe a grayish, a pinkish, a reddish color, whatever you might see of the light filtering in, you may see speckles of movement perhaps. But ultimately that whatever we see, whatever form that colour is behind our eyelids, it's space. You know, we're not seeing the boundary of that because it consumes our whole vision. We can't, you know, peek around the corner of that image. It is an image of space. The wonderful element of tuning into space within our practice as a focus of our attention is that it is unlimited. 
its own boundary. All this quality points us beyond form, beyond objective awareness and into the subjective experience of being. Just allow your breath to flow deep. Enjoy it. The space. Enjoy the giving of yourself to this wonderful yoga posture, Shavasana. It has so many benefits for our state of mind. Our nervous system, even our immunity from a state of rest from stress, we are stronger. So Shavasana is, you know, it's kind of a dropping into a quiet strength. Return to our center, our essence. like you to now take a slower, extended breath and allow yourself to really enjoy that breath. See if you can stay with that breath as an experience of enjoyment. We always have that choice. And then when you've taken that breath, or a couple of those breaths, however many you need. You may bend your knees and place your feet to the floor. Sides face away from me and just pause there, allow yourself to rest, allowing yourself to be, allowing yourself to enjoy. Okay. 
home when you're ready you may roll yourselves over onto your other side To enjoy. And imagine this moment here was the whole purpose you came to this class for. It's a ride and you're fully committed to it. Again, you may start to bring yourselves out of your posture slowly in your own time. So it might be with a little movement, it might be with some more conscious breaths, whatever you need. And then when you're ready, come to sit in a comfortable seated posture, any comfortable seated posture, cross-legged, kneeling, whatever works for you. So you're upright. Take support as you need it. And we're going to close the class together. As we did early on in the class, we're going to chant OM three times together. And we're going to really feel into the OMs that we make together. You know, like coming together of us here in the room, but we're going to send that sound out to everyone with compassion. So the hands to the heart. Let's take a deep inhalation to prepare.